11.30 in the morning now on day number three of AdFest out here on Sunday morning, June the 21st, 2019. And what would a trip to Athens be without going into Bizarro Wexley's? This is one of those rare uh, comic book stores that doesn't just have new releases. They've also got a huge backlog of old comics dating as far back as, I don't know, probably the 50s. Uh, and a lot of like zines, self-published stuff, a lot of underground stuff, the kind of stuff that I absolutely love, as well as tons of other vintage toys, things like that. This is a rare gem in downtown Athens. And every time I come out to Athfest, I've got to go in here. I'm supposed to open at 12.30. These guys are supposed to open at 12. So usually I only get like 20 minutes in here. Let's hope maybe they opened a little early this time. Oh, they did. The door is open. I get about an hour this time. Wahoo. Once there lived a creative soul just outside of Atlanta. He had a good job but never fit in. He had a big apartment, but it cost him a limb. So one day he packed it all up and threw it into storage, hit the open road, and became a traveling characterist. Now he lives in a camper and travels all the time. He works at fairs and festivals. For the price of a single click, you can join the ride. Also, don't forget to ring that bell icon. Oh no, Ghost World. This one was made into a movie. Most of the people that watch the movie don't realize it was originally a comic. It's one of those very adult themed, no superheroes kind of uh, down to earth movies. Oh, Tank Girl. This uh, was made by the same team that went on to make the Gorillas music group. And Tank Girl was made into a campy old movie. I think it was the mid 90s. Tank Girl played by Naomi Watt, if I remember right. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good movie. Post apocalyptic world with sentient kangaroo dogs <laughs> and a uh, and a spunky blonde punk girl that just kind of eats it up she's kind of okay with being in a post-apocalyptic world oh appropriate I've got the trade book right here hmm and you can really see the the uh, gorillas look to it right there Oh, and we've got Squee. See, I've got this one. I don't. I don't have the. I don't have the actual comics. Johnny, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. This I've actually got that one too. <laughs> I don't have this one. And then Inventor's M. So we've got a lot of Jen and Vesquez right here on this line. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, Filler Bunny. Already got that. Dang it. Darker version of a um, Harry Potter world. These I've I've gotten a few of those already and read them. Oh, here we go. The total tank girl. This looks like a nice thick trade book. Probably a lot of issues in this one. A really big head. Now this one, you can really tell the influence of Stain Boy by Tim Burton in this one. This right here. It's definitely something you can only see in a store like this. Organ erasers. And I guess that, that's the heart there. Intestines. Oh, excuse me, colon. <laughs> this would be the, uh, let's see, the bladder. Oh, it's appropriately yellow. This is uh, the uh, uterus. Okay. We've got fallopian tubes out here like little arms. Yeah. What is this one? This one is the pancreas. The pancreas. Hey, pancreas. You are my favorite organ. I think that was from Street Sharks. It looks like it at least. Uh, and then, Or maybe this was some of those obscure... Uh, villains they made for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toy line. They uh, they sold so many they just kind of started making stuff up eventually. And uh, of course some vintage He-Man. Here, <laughs> I don't collect this stuff. 
There would be no end to it if I did, though. They had some uh, pogo figurines in this case last year. I was kind of hoping I could pick them up this year, but it looks like somebody bought them. Yeah. And, uh, oh my goodness, what is this thing? But that looks like something off a of cuphead there, doesn't it? That old Phil. Oh, wait, no, here they are. Here they are. Those are the pogo figures. They're ten dollars a piece, though. But man, you never see those anymore. And I know I saw them last year, so they've been sitting there for a year. <laughs> and oh, you got uh, some old cabbage patch. Or yes, first thing I want to say, cabbage patch. This is um, garbage pill kids. This though, I think is uh, oh, this is the sticker. It's the puffy sticker. You can kind of fill it in there. They didn't just have the cards, they had the puffy stickers. And some Ninja Turtles here. And speaking of that kind of thing, though, this is something apparently that was released later on. Uh, you can get a whole book of Garbage Pill Kids uh, cards, just in a book form. And they also have the Bazooka Gums released into a, a book. And the Mars Attacks. This was a trading card that the uh, movie, the Tim Burton movie, was actually based on. Now in a book form. Uh, even Planet of the Apes and uh, Empire Strikes Back. Bonus cards. It's a bunch of Topps books being released. And this book right here, Persephilis. This one was made into a really, really good movie. I would definitely recommend seeing this. Um, and it's based around a little girl that grew up in Iran when the um, the Muslim uh, the theocracy really started taking hold and quite literally killing people that wouldn't conform and uh, before all that happened Iran was actually a very very free and fun place to live over here on this shelf these are all uh, uh, zines, um, underground comics, and my own comics were on this shelf at one point, years ago. It was called Frogskin Boots. I um, published it on Keen Spot. I don't think that even exists anymore. It was a webcomic. And then uh, I went over to a indie comic convention that was actually here in Athens called Fluke. And then they... You know, at the end of Fluke, if you had a lot of backlog left over, you could come over here and sell it to these guys for a discounted price, and they would they would stock it here on the shelf. A lot of these are students of uh, SCADS, Vanna College of Art and Design, the sequential art program, and they do their projects, and then they put them into books. And um, they, they, of course, get graded on them, and they do their homework. That's all their assignments. They also try to sell them at Fluke. And later they end up here. So this is a this is a one of a kind shelf right here. There are comics on this shelf that you will not be able to find anywhere else in the country. Just right here. So I'm gonna take a look through here. Probably gonna buy some of these. We got some figurines, posable figurines of the classic Universal Monsters. I just watched this not long ago. That's actually turned out to be a really good movie. I haven't been able to see many of the others yet. I actually have this one on VHS and haven't watched it yet. I need to do a review of it. Oh, look at this. There's a Little Nemo lunchbox here. Captain Nemo was the pilot that, that you know, designed and built the Nautilus in uh, Jules Verne novel, 30,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So I think that was where the name Nemo was popularized and then later used in this comic strip the syndicated comic strip in newspapers for for a long time and it was very stylized in art uh... the idea was that this character Nemo would uh... fall asleep and have adventures and you could follow his adventures in the comics and uh... and then that was made into a movie i think Don Bluth a Don Bluth movie that actually wasn't very good and then now everybody thinks of Nemo as being the little uh, clownfish in the Pixar movie. So the name Nemo lives on. 
This one is very tempting for me to get. Uh, I found the little Lulu character on some of those uh, compilation DVDs that you get for characters that have reached the public domain. found them to be very well done and very funny. I wasn't aware that it was a comic strip that had this much of a material to it. But if you've ever listened to the old radio show Fibber McGee and Molly, um, the, uh, the, the lady that did the voice of Molly also did a little girl. I can't remember what her name was, but she did this little girl that was real annoying. And it was that same voice, that voice, Little Lulu, and in the cartoon. I don't think there was more than maybe ten cartoons made. But uh, this, this, if it's anything like a cartoon, it's probably pretty good. But it's $25, though. Huh. Okay, this one is a definite get right here. This one, the guy that created this, uh, this one became, this, this story became so acclaimed that he was able to um, be a little more picky about the kind of commission jobs that he took after this, because this one got some good reviews. But um, at the time that he was making this, uh, his, his little boy was going through some health problems. And so, like, this, this little mummy character kind of became like his emotional connection to his son and so the the stuff they were going through started uh, coming into the comics and um, yeah uh, I, I, I heard about all this from um, a TED talk that he did on it a very inspirational TED talk but yeah, this is this is a good find right here. I'm definitely going to get this and read it. Some of you might remember when I did that tour of the Okefenokee Swamp on the train and whatnot. Um, and I found that they had made a uh, replica of Walt Kelly's studio because he was uh, a cartoonist in the Waycross area and based all of his characters out of the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, the main character being Pogo. As a matter of fact, the Swamp Fest used to be called Pogo Fest. Um... I found a good variety of um, of Walt Kelly Pogo uh, collections here, and I think I'm going to uh, get at least one of them. Uh, I'm not real familiar with the storylines and characters. I, I do know the artwork really well, um, but uh, I really want to want to get. The, I think I'm going to get one of the smaller ones just to kind of get started on. See, like you can see the. The swamp backgrounds with the bushes and the big cypress trees and all that. And he would walk out into the swamp to uh, to make sure, as as reference, you know, just to make sure he was he was getting that Okefenokee feel in his comics. And it's just so beautifully done. Nice tapered lines. I could just admire the artwork and not, not even read it, and I would still enjoy it like crazy. Just got out of Bizarro Wuxley's. I'll show you my haul a little bit later. Uh, and I really should be at my booth opening up, but no. I can't go to Athens without stopping at Jittery Joe's at least once. Let's go on in. Dirty chai. This time with four shots in it. Well, I'm doing the hipster thing of sitting in a coffee shop and it, when I'm supposed to be at work. But I figured this would be a good time for me to go ahead and show you what I got from Bizarro Wuxley's first. Uh, the Umbrella Academy. This was written by Gerard, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. And um, this has to be a later printing because it's advertising the Netflix show which didn't happen until a long time after the first issue was was published. So this is definitely some kind of like printing later on, but I really want to get into the series, so this is a good place to start. And then, of course, I already told you guys about, about Heck. Um, and then the, the Pogo I decided on was uh, Volume 5, because this one looks like it's got, still got that, that raw beginner look to the art. Um, and... Uh, and yet, 
There's some good tapered lines and good backgrounds and all that. This is, uh, I think this is a good place to start. And then the underground comics I went with, one called uh, Track Rabbit. It's got this um, altered reality kind of uh, science fiction feel to it. Um, and then one called the Neighborhood Theater Comics, Volume 3. I think this one is a collection of a bunch of different ones, but most of these are self-contained little stories that just last one page. Um, but they have kind of a zap comic feel to them, but not quite as lurid. And then this cute little one called All Star. This was only a dollar, and uh, you know, it's about a little girl. It's definitely taking inspiration from Steven Universe, it looks like, but it's about this little girl that has superpowers and her big sister that just kind of guides her, tries to guide her um, in like stopping floods and forest fires and things like that. Looks like a fun read. So that's what I got. Now, uh, Athens has also got a zombie donuts. Yeah. And it, from the pictures on the internet, it looks similar to the one out in Portland, Oregon. So we're talking, I, I, I wish I could go to that, but like I said, I gotta go to work. If I could go to that, that would be the full, the full hipster trifecta. The comic book store, the coffee shop, and then the donut store. I can't do it though. Hopefully I'll be able to get it worked in there at some point.